All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the progression for drawing uh, a human face using structural analysis. Here we go. I'm gonna just put down a little bit, very light, mid gray ground, uh, just so that we can establish some of these features using light and shadow. Um, I'm just using a layer or two of vine charcoal for this. You could also use um, powder graphite if that's what you have on hand. But we're just trying to establish enough tone so that we can use our eraser to pull out light bright planes. And I'm making that value space slightly larger than the space occupied by the face uh, in my reference picture. All right, so next, just like our PowerPoint that I just presented, the first step that we're really gonna notice and establish on our drawing um, and actually on a reference image is the longitudinal midline. Remember that's going to be that line that vertically bisects the, uh, spa the face and the facial features are mirrored across. So I am just pulling down from center of uh, forehead through uh, the center of that nose, both at the top, that's called the nason, down to the septum, the bone under that's called the vomer, uh, down through the center of the chin, chin, If you have a tilt on the head of your reference, if they're leaning slightly, angling their head slightly to the left or right, um, I would recommend just reorienting your photo reference so that longitudinal midline stays vertical. It'll just keep your measurements easier for the rest of the time that you're drawing. So I'm just gonna darken that line up. There we go. All right, and then more lightly this time, because this will be a line I wanna erase on my final drawing, I'm going to establish a central vertical to balance all my measurements off of as I draw. There we go. All right, um, and I'm just using a graphite pencil for this. I'm, I'm at 6B, you don't need to be that dark. I just wanna make sure that you see uh, my work. So, all right, next what we're going to do, uh, the first measurement we're going to make is a nasal measurement that measures from the nason, which is uh, kind of base of the frontal bone, so right between the eyebrows, down to uh, the septum, or the bony land, landmark of the vomer, which is the little bone that that nasal cartilage grows off of. Um, so I've marked it on Justin. You can do that if you want. But what's more imagine or more important is if you mark it on the measuring stick. So I have the top of my measuring stick at the top of his nason. Uh, bottom is at the base of what I'm seeing of the nasal cartilage, or approximately the vomer. I'm going to pull that exact scale over and lay it down on my drawing. First, just as tick marks, I'll extend it out just a little bit further so you can see. All right. Once we get uh, that vertical measurement uh, of that length of the nose, uh, we can think about our rules of proportion and just sort of see how, in my case, Justin Bieber's face uh, lines up to what we'd expect of proportion. So remember um, that height of that face, facial area is usually about three nose lengths. So uh, that facial area would be up to the top of the hairline um, as one nose length, then a nose length, and then the bottom. Um, that, that bottom third of the face, again, uh, proportionally speaking, is close to uh, a third nose length. So let's just look at that. So our first nasal measurement on, 
on Justin. I'm going to pull one up once, so the line that I had uh, for the base of his nose is now in line with the nason, and I'm seeing that that does land me at about exactly where his hairline is. This could vary a lot from image to image, so if you're finding something a little shorter or a little longer, adjust accordingly. Um, both a tilted angle of the face or or just just a different point where the hairline grows could vary that measurement. So if you're not finding that that stays quite as proportional, um, you'll adjust and make a new line to where that relates. But for Justin, we were lining up pretty much exactly. All right. Next, what I'm going to do is same thing. Pull that nasal measurement on my measuring stick first, then I'm going to pull down once. And what I'm seeing is that uh, that lowest third of his face uh, actually is longer than a nasal measurement by about half an inch, it looks like. So I'm just going to roll my measuring stick ever so slightly so I have a new plane to mark. And now I've measured from the base of his nose or the vomer down uh, to the base of his chin or the bottom of the mandible. All right, then I'm going to take this measurement, pull it over. And now what I've done is I've established the entire length of Justin Bieber's face. So base of chin, hairline. Later I'll make another measurement that gets me up to his hair. That's uh, the volume of the hair is, of course, less predictable than uh, some of the other facial shapes. So I'm not going to do it early and rely on it. I'll sort of fill that in later in this drawing. All right, let's head back to the nose. Let's measure some width measurements. I'm gonna do uh, a few, actually. Um, once you have the longitudinal midline drawn, you can really start seeing how symmetrical uh, those shapes are. There might be some slight variation, which you can either decide to be drawing um, specifically or simplifying a little bit. Um, artists do both. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to start at that nason and I'm going to measure the distance uh, to the edges uh, of that narrowest part of the nose. Um, sometimes just measuring from the head of eyebrow to head of eyebrow um, can be easier or the easiest landmark to find. So. I've aligned this side of the measuring stick with the head of Justin Bieber's eyebrow, pulling out to make a mark that's even with his left eyebrow. And you can see uh, that I have that longitudinal midline crossing over those two widths symmetrically. So, uh, I had laid that measurement right at the nason line, which I also have on my drawing. So I'm going to pull it over here. I have a location to put that measurement, so I'll lay it down exactly, precisely as I saw it. So that width between uh, Justin Bieber's eyebrows, um, I've translated exactly. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to find the width first of his nasal cartilage. That's kind of the ball at the end of your nose, all right? Um, and then I'll probably move out uh, to the widest part from there. Usually there's a shadowy kind of uh, shape that shows you the delineation between the uh, wings of the nostril and that nasal cartilage. Um, but you just want to be finding shapes that are really easy to see initially. And then as you get those bigger, simple shapes in, you can get more uh, refined and defined. Um, also, I'm going to just take a minute to erase the previous marks on my measuring stick just so they don't confuse me. All right. So going ahead, I see a shadowy spot at the edge of the nasal cartilage over on the right side. So I put align my measuring stick with that edge. All right, now I have found that same shadowy shape over on the left side. Again, 
that width is uh, bisected by the longitudinal midline. So quite often I'll give myself a little tick mark for that too. Now I'm down at the Voner line and I'm gonna mark those two points. Okay, um, kind of thinking structurally underneath uh, the nasal cavity at a skeletal level does get to be uh, kind of a triangular shape. That's how we end up sort of simplifying jack-o'-lanterns jack into that sort of triangular shaped nose if you're pumpkin carving. Not that pumpkins have a whole lot to do with the human face, but it's just something to sort of consider. Um, so, so that is helping me define from that narrowest part up at the nason uh, out to the widest point of the nasal cartilage. Now, we might also be finding some additional nasal shapes. Uh, I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but let's move on to the next one at the bottom. So first, we measured out to nasal cartilage. Now let's do a secondary measurement, which will be the widest point in the nose out to the very widest edges of the wing of each nostril. Clean off my measuring stick. Same familiar process, right side of the measuring stick over on the edge of Justin's right nostril, mark for the left, indicate that longitudinal midline just to ensure that I am making my measurements make sense. I almost, almost lost it there. All right. And I'll indicate those widths. All right. Um, now I'm going to just take a little time to make some more kind of nuanced measurements. I'm going to look for areas of that nose uh, that sort of get lower and higher than those first measured lines. So you can see that sort of arcing up of the nostrils. I'm going to also be looking for planes that are very light uh, and, and some surrounding shadow planes. I'll talk my way through this as I do this, but... Uh, um, that's going to be my next step. All right. So the next thing that I'm noticing is that there is uh, a point that the nose kind of dips a little bit lower. We had established that lowest point. Um, but I'm going to just kind of look at first with a horizontal measurement. I'm going to use my measuring stick just to kind of indicate the line uh, that the nostrils rise up to. And I can see that's about a quarter inch higher than the lowest point uh, of the septum between the two nostrils or the vomer. So after I've established that as a horizontal, I can measure from uh, that base of the nose, indicate a little tick mark, and then establish that over on my drawing. All right, and then once I get that height down, this is the highest point of the nostril, which is going to come out past the nasal cartilage. So that's where I can start uh, creating a more organic nuance line based on that measurement. After I get that highest point uh, of the nostril, I'll look again and I'll notice that uh, the base of the wings of the nostrils are just a little bit higher uh, than the lowest point of the septum. And so I could either repeat the measurement I just made or based on that discovery, uh, sort of split the difference and translate, translate it to my drawing just a little bit more uh, immediately, all right? Uh, next thing I'm gonna measure is I'm going to go ahead and notice uh, the height of the nostril, the wings of the nostril. I could either be measuring uh, from this longer horizontal line that I made up to that shadowy wing. So top of nostril, top of measuring stick, making a mark 
to ing indicate the bottom of the nostril and translating it that way, right? Or I could do it the same way I did with the septum where I pull a horizontal line up to the top of the nostrils, extend it out. And then what I can do is just mo measure that height off my original bottom of the nose. to top of the, the nostril along the mid longitudinal midline, kind of using it like a ruler. Either way, works beautifully. Definitely personal preference and ultimately it'll be what works uh, accurately and also efficiently or quickly for you as you draw portraits, especially once you switch from working uh, from an image to working from life, uh, where you're kind of also managing the fact that someone just doesn't want to sit there that long. All right. Um, so that's kind of a nice basic nose shape for Justin Bieber. And I can feel very confident about the measurements because I've pulled them directly, haven't changed scale uh, at all. Um, so now I'm going to switch tools for just a minute to start finding even more lightness by sort of creating a little bit of, of uh, noticing of the play of light and value on that shape. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna do just quickly is lighten my longitudinal midline on my printout of his face just a little bit so you can see those shapes again. I'm not totally erasing it, but brightening it up a little bit for you. Um, and we can see, uh, like I said, in um, our PowerPoint, the nose is a projecting plane. It sticks out. Um, it, you know, it has this top plane that sort of turns towards the light source, which is quite often above. Um, and so usually you will uh, see it as a contrasting plane and quite often a bright plane. And that's what we see on Justin Bieber's nose. So what I'm going to do uh, is just establish that in my drawing by brightening that plane with my eraser. And so already you can see that shape of the nose uh, is starting to lift forward um, and the nostrils which are still established uh, in that value plane start receding a little bit. I'm detecting a little bit of light on them as well so I'll go ahead uh, and indicate that as well. All right, um, now the next shape that we kind of want to look for is what we call the descending planes of the nasal cavity. Uh, it's broader and bigger uh, than you expect. Um, and a lot of times in drawing, people really only uh, create that bright illumination on the top plane of the nose. So you end up with noses that look uh, a little bit uh, strange and small. Um, so what I want you to do actually sooner rather than later, later is on your reference picture, I want you to look for light and value planes that sit just beside the nose. So we get really dark in the eye socket, which we'll talk about uh, soon. Um, but you'll notice these two kind of descending planes that sort of move off the brightest center plane and kind of start angling towards the the cheeks. And they'll get, you know, um, they just slowly uh, turn away from the light source and get a little bit darker uh, as they go. So I'm gonna first start looking for those value planes that kind of establish the bridge planes coming off the nose and uh, indicate them with both edges and value. All right, um, so as I look at that coming off, it looks like the very widest point of those bridge planes happens just below Justin's eye socket. So I'm gonna pull a horizontal out there I'll measure from base of nose up to that line that I just created. Oops. 
go that over without losing which one it was. There it is, okay. I'm gonna pull out a horizontal to establish that, and then, again, I'm all, it leads me to maybe the middle third of Justin's eyes. Here's the, on your drawing, you may be seeing this much lighter, much darker, you may see one side of this Playing much more clearly than the other, depending on how uh, your person is lit. But there'll be some indication, at least on one side, that will help you establish that width of the nose. And then I'll drop that down. go. All right. I'm going to just sort of gesture it in. as the plane and then start indicating those shapes as I see them with just a little bit more value. So this helps me move away from a linear approach of drawing Justin's face and gets to a more tonal, organic rendering approach, which is much more in line with what I see. It's also going to help me at this point is to drop a little bit of value below the nose, because the nose almost always casts a bit of a shadow. And so even though we aren't very far in the face, go ahead and take some time to refine your nasal shapes now. And anytime you see a new shape, the nose getting narrower or wider, just take a minute to define those positions. Use your measuring stick to ensure that you are placing them properly and considering symmetry as you do. Noticing an even smaller kind of pinch here in, nasal, in Justin's nasal shape. It happens below the nasal. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing that I don't get a whole lot on Justin Bieber, but you might be finding in your nose is remember, as I said, uh, in the PowerPoint, the nasal bone steps about halfway through uh, the length of the nose. Um, and so quite often, both sort of at the edges of the nose, and then potentially as we transition from the edge of the nasal bone down to the nasal cartilage, you'll see a shift in shape, it might be uh, a sort of pinch in pinching in uh, a broadening of the nasal bone above and then it gets a little narrow narrower just below in the nasal cartilage it could uh, look like it's leaner and tighter up in that upper nose bridge and then as it transitions to nasal cartilage it uh, gets much broader you could also go from like a very symmetrical shape to something that grows uh, more asymmetrically because although cartilage is supposed to follow the rules um, it's much more likely to uh, to grow um, a little bit more irregularly or unpredictably so so look look if you feel like the nose is deviating from symmetrical look right towards that center to see if it's relating to uh, the end of the nasal bone and indicate it as such so I'm just seeing an 
ever so slightly more kind of pinching and widening on Justin's nose. It's slight, it's not huge. Maybe there's a little bit of shadow, something like that.